Hello, Internet. Welcome to the After Credits Podcast. We are Mean Green Rage Machines, and with me today, I have General Medorius Ryan. <laughs> God damn it, I forgot about that. <laughs> Forgot about it, Ryan. No, no, we shouldn't forget shit. What are you talking about? And I, and I am Emil Blonsky, aka the Aaron Nation. And of course, we are missing uh, Max Manor, uh, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. We're not gonna. This guy. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, for those who may have caught the subtle hint, yes, this is the second time we've recorded this. Um, Shut up. <laughs> due to uh, unforeseen technical difficulties, uh, this is the second attempt. We were going to try to make it as as colorful and fun as like as we did the first time. Um, we can do it. Can I do believe it. in us. I mean, there's only one color we have to worry about, and that's green. Speaking of which, uh, yeah. we're talking about the Hulk. Oh my god! We're talking about the Hulk this week. <laughs> we are. We are talking about the Hulk. Um, so, quick quick little roundup of the stats here, like I will do for every movie, because we want to make sure we know what we're talking about. Uh, this movie was released June 13th in 2008, just a little bit after Iron Man. Uh, the director was Louis Leterrier. Leter- Leterrier? I mispronounced it in the first attempt as well. Uh, the writers are... Leterrier? Penn. Maybe? Maybe Leterrier. Uh, the writers are Zach Penn and Edward Norton, who also stars in our movie, by the way. Um, we had a little discussion about that last time, I believe, where, we, uh, Ryan, you were not aware he was a, in, uh, the, one of the writers of the movie. That's right, and I forgot this time, so <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm at the same, the same level. Interesting, wow. Yep. Um, and just for those who, uh, I'm sure Ryan's the only one, Edward Norton's uh, role as a writer actually was caused some controversy with the film's release. Um, if you remember from last week when we did our trivia, Max had asked a question about the alternate opening. That actually is a reference to um, Edward Norton's role in the movie. He wanted to have this alternate opening where you see Captain America's shield, but more primarily, you see uh, Bruce Banner try to kill himself in the middle of a blizzard, so to speak, and Hulk comes out and stops them because Hulk ain't gonna let that happen. Um, and of course, the studio heads were not super fond of this idea. There was some back and forth. Ultimately, Ed Norton was removed from the role of the Hulk to let it be replaced by Mark Ruffalo, which is what the director wanted anyway. So, I mean, win-win, I suppose. Except for Ed Norton. What re- Honestly, what really kills me is that he managed, he made such a big deal out of a, what, 90-second scene? <laughs> uh, true, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's not a, the biggest deal breaker, but I get what Edward Orton was trying to do. And as many of you... I, I do too, it, but I mean, well, pick and, your and, battles, man. And, and, and well, as you said, I think either during our previous recording or even the last episode, uh, Edward Orton's not a fun guy to work with. He's a good actor, yeah. but he's not a fun guy to work with. Yeah, I've heard tell. I've, 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 I've heard the stories. <laughs> uh, speaking of working with Ed Norton, uh, his co-stars include Tim Roth, who plays the Abomination, a.k.a. Emil Blonsky. Emil Blonsky! <laughs> and uh, William Hurt, a.k.a. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross. And, of course, Liv Tyler, a.k.a. Betty Ross. That's correct. Uh, the number, the box office numbers are always important. Uh, the opening box office numbers for that weekend, uh, when it released, was 55,414,000 uh, for its domestic overall. It made 134 million. 806,000. Not super great in the grand scheme of things. We'll get to that in a moment. And then for the worldwide total, Incredible Hulk managed to rake in a measly 263,427,000. I say measly yeah. because in the grand scheme of things for Marvel, that's a pittance. For me, I'd take that in a heartbeat. But for Marvel, that's a pittance. <laughs> yeah. When, when, you, when you compare it to, to the grosses of all of the other um, movies in the MCU, just individually. Well, well, I mean, if you go back yeah. to just one... If you go it's back, a little, it's a little weak. If you go back even just one film, uh, Iron Man, I think, worldwide made over half a billion, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's very telling. And, of course, that means that uh, the Hulk... Currently, and probably for a good long time, will be ranked 17th on the overall MCU chart for highest grossing films. Yeah, and we'll get into a little... I mean, I'll get into uh, my reasonings as to why later on, but yeah, I'm pretty sure Hulk is going to be my, my, my 17th for, for the whole thing. Oh, you mean for our uh, rankings, you think? Yeah, for the rankings. Really? I wouldn't put it at 17 personally, but we'll, we'll get to that as well. But we'll totally get to that. Um, so, uh, Ryan, last we spoke, uh, we were just getting off Iron Man, gonna go see Star Wars, and now we're here to see Hulk. 
uh, before we get into Hulk. What do you think of Star Wars, buddy? You think it was good? I thought it was pretty damn good, and we can do an entire um, we can do an entire whole uh, show on on why we liked uh, Star Wars uh, when so many people didn't. But I think um, that's definitely a worthwhile episode. Um, I'm actually we, we should do that. <laughs> I'm actually considering so once we finish the Marvel films, um, there's a good chance we'll probably continue this with other films. I might put up a straw poll with the last few episodes of this coming out and um, ask the audience what they want us to see. I'll make options like Star Wars, DC films, uh, other Marvel movies that aren't the MCU, um, anime movies like Studio Ghibli. I don't know. I'll get a whole bunch of options. We'll see what people want us to watch. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down for that. I'm definitely pulling for that uh, Studio Ghibli one because while I love the idea for Star Wars, I've only seen a few of the Studio Ghibli films and quite frankly, I don't know which ones I'm going to like the best out of that, so it'd be kind of fun to experiment with that. That would that would be really good. I've only seen a couple, but yeah. While everyone's mulling that over, Ryan, let's go ahead and discuss what this movie's all about here. Alright, alright. So, Act 1 uh, opens up with the opening credits, and I made a big deal about it in the original recording, but I want to make a big deal about it here again. These opening credits basically summarize the origin of the Hulk. You see the explosion, you see the characters, you see the Hulk tr- first transformation, sort of. More like a silhouette, mostly. You see him run away, you see Ross trying to chase him down, or at least get the beginning of that whole rival, or that whole animosity going. It's a really good intro sequence that explains where the Hulk came from, and why we're at where we're in the movie today. Um, I re- I personally really like it, because this is the first, uh, this is the first instance of what I, of what, like, a lot of people refer to as a soft reboot. Uh, because it doesn't, the movie itself doesn't go out of its way to say that the 2008 Ang Lee movie, the uh, of Hulk, is not canon. But it doesn't really do anything to. It doesn't like go out of its way to connect itself to it. Instead, they just spend the night, the intro, explaining the origins again, what happened. And that, okay, so this is what happened. Hulk is now on, and Bruce Banner is now on the run, trying to figure out how to figure, how to find a cure. Like, end, end sentence. Full stop. Perfect. So I really love the way they did that. And it's definitely something I wish more origin stories would do, especially the ones we've seen a lot of, like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Unless you're going to do something really drastically different with your origin story. And I'm not saying drastic like, oh, instead of stopping a guy trying to rob a wrestling match, he stops a guy trying to rob a a jug of milk or some shit. No, no. I I mean, like, if it's a legitimately, like, vastly different origin story, by all means, show the origin story. I'm fine with that. But if you're going to just copy-paste what the comics had, what the previous iteration had, this is probably the best way to do it. (laughs) You know, honestly, it would be really, really cool if the next Batman movie actually starts out with the origin and, like, it goes through the same stuff, but then right at the pivotal moment where people die, it's instead Bruce that gets shot. Oh, kind of like the Flashpoint universe. Yeah, and then you would tell the Flashpoint Batman, and but nobody would know. Nobody would know it was coming. That would be interesting if they revealed that the Ben Affleck's Batman is actually Thomas Wayne. <laughs> That'd oh be my really god, that would have been the best! I, 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 would, I would pay all of my monies. That would be the best twist. That would excuse quite like, a bit kind of, of Batman vs. Superman, too, honestly. <laughs> Ugh, please. Uh, how many podcasts are we going to have where we bash Batman vs. Superman? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like that well will never run dry. <laughs> uh, anyway, so after we get to these opening credits, uh, we find ourselves in the middle of South America. I want to say it's near Brazil. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a little while um, since I've seen it, this one. I'm pretty sure... It, I'm pretty sure it is Brazil. Okay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're in Brazil, and um, we we're seeing what happened to Bruce after that amazing intro sequence. He's living on the lam in Brazil, living day to day. He's taking breathing exercises. He's uh, taking a part-time, I, I guess, part-time job. Um, in a factory to kind of keep himself busy, all while trying to find a cure and communicating with a man back in the States who we all just affectionately call Mr. Blue for the time being. Um, mm-hmm. While working in the factory, um, he's basically just the guy who makes sure everything's clean with the bottles, but whenever something comes up technical-wise, he's asked to come and fix it. One day he goes to fix something. During the fixing process, no big deal, it's an easy fix, he cuts himself and a little bit of blood falls down on one of the lower conveyor belts. Bruce freaks out, of course, because he's the Hulk. And if that blood gets into somebody, 
or inf inf uh, infect somebody in just the right way, people could die. Um, he thinks he's, he, he looks, he finds the drop that has landed on the conveyor belt, everything's fine. Or is it? A, a, <laughs> a, a uh, little bit of blood happened to get on one of the bottles and it goes back into the processing lineup to get filled and sent out uh, to wherever it ends up at. Uh, it, bum, bum, bum. it would turn out it would end up in Mr. Stan Lee's fridge for a very fun cameo where he dies. Sorry, Mr. Lee. <laughs> oh my god. A very fun cameo in which he does. Uh, anyway. <laughs> it, it was a cute cameo. I liked it. Um, not my favorite one, but it was cute. Um, anyway, so this, uh, the, the death of Stan Lee triggers uh, a notification, I suppose, to General Ross and his team trying to track down Bruce Banner. When they realize where this bottle came from, this Pingo Dose drink, they realize that they have to go down to South America to track down the Hulk. Which is where Ross calls in Special Operative e uh, Emil Blonsky. He basically says, you're going to be in charge of this team to track down this man, this fugitive. Doesn't give any other details. We'll get to that in a minute. So Bruce is uh, still down south. He uh, gets re results back from Mr. Blue as to his most recent test, so to speak. And it's inconclusive. He needs more information. Beside himself, Bruce decides he needs to figure out what he's got to do. Uh, he goes off, and during one of his round... Uh, no, wait, sorry. Uh, so he is about to take off when he realizes that there are people in the general area who are not normal people for the general area. Um, he realizes very quickly that uh, Ross has found out where he is and he's being hunted, so he slips away just as the soldiers are coming into his, uh, his little, I guess, apartment, his dwelling. They bust in, they don't see, they see he's already left, so they start spraying all over the city to find him. Through a very interesting set of parkour and uh, stealth mechanics, um, Bruce has evaded the soldiers for a moment until some of the local thugs who he works with at the bottling plant realize who he is, find him, and they chase him down. They chase him into the bottling plant because, for some reason, Bruce thinks it's safer there than anywhere else. Um, the soldiers catch wind of this, and they follow him there as well. They got all the snipers all around the building, they're positioned ready to go, while those thugs are beating the crap out of uh, Bruce. All the while, his heart rate is pumping and pumping, and stress is getting to him with all, all, all this action, and he realizes he can't hold back anymore, and that's when the Hulk comes loose. <laughs> Whoops. So I mentioned this before, but uh, in the previous recording, but this is probably my, one of my favorite scenes of this film, where the Hulk first breaks out, and you're just in this really dark... Um, poorly lit uh, factory, and you see these machines flying around, you hear people screaming, you see bodies flying all over the place. It's kind of like a short little horror monster flick in the middle of your Avengers or your uh, Hulk movie. And they do a yeah. really, it's not overtly terrifying, but they do a good job framing it, kind of like the uh, the tentacles in the uh, Spider Man 2 movie. Where they get all like creepy and horrifying for a minute there. Like, yeah, I, 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 I give it to you. I give it. To I don't you. think they go quite. I as was, I wasn't scared really. I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't think personally it's scary, but I think they're trying to go that same direction, and they do a fine job of it. I think this is. I mean, this is me, the guy who absolutely hates jump scares and horror movies and, and spooky games and shit like that, telling you that it wasn't scary. That means it wasn't that damn scary. Uh, but they, they they frame it in just the right way to at least give it a darker vibe, which fits well for this scene, I think. That's fair. That is fair. Um, so, uh, after the Hulk goes crazy here, uh, he runs off. Emil Blonsky calls up Ross, and he's like, listen, you didn't tell me all the stuff I needed to know. What the fuck just happened here? Of course, that's when Emil and, uh, that's when Blonsky and Ross meet up, and they discuss their plans going forward, which is going to take place in the next act. And then we also find the Hulk has woken up uh, basically naked. Pants are the only thing left in his name. He gets picked up on the side of the road by some local farmer, and he asks where he is. He's just south of Mexico. <laughs> he's gone up quite a bit. And, uh, he's asking for a ride, uh, to the, I think to the nearest, like, phone or, or like, tra uh, bus station to get back home. Uh, so that's when we uh, venture back to the States, where we're going into Act 2. Now, before we start talking about Act 2, I uh, I first want to bring up the fact that um, a lot of Bruce's... I mean, for starters, like, Bruce in Marvel canon is one of the smartest people in the planet. Oh, like, on the planet, period. Um, and the foremost uh, and the foremost expert in gamma radiation, but this movie does a really good job of featuring his ingenuity, which I personally like found fantastic. I mean, this is a guy who 
ex who lives like on the run from the government, like hiding, like goes unnoticed for five years, no real money to his name. And then even after he goes nuts as the Hulk, loses everything that he has, he manages to get from Guatemala to like and sneak back into the States with no money in a grand total of, I want to say like, 17 days like because they have this uh they have this counter with it goes days without incident uh and after the day after he goes nuts as the hulk it sets down to one and then when he's back when they show him finally getting back to the states it goes to 18. so like 17 days he goes from literally nothing except like a pair of really baggy pants to being able to get back to the states. I'm assuming without he paid, being, I'm assuming without he paid for his trip with a lot of hand jobs. But I, I, I mean, it's possible. But Dag Nabbit, uh Also, this is one of the. This is like pretty much the only like soup like Marvel superhero that we've seen actually experience like poverty and like destitution, which I thought was a very interesting thing to showcase. I mean, it, it makes Bruce definite. It makes Bruce definitely a more sympathetic character, but honestly, like his ingenuity, his ingenuity is through the fucking roof. I just, I could not let that go, like pass, like un unstated, because that blew my fucking mind when I saw that. But alas, uh, in Act Two, uh, we uh, we have Bruce finally getting back to the states. Uh, he needs to get back to the states because uh, he needs to get the original data that was used in the experiment that actually made him into the Hulk. Uh, he has to get this to Mr. Blue so that he can take a look at it and see if he can synthesize some form of cure because we know that Mr. Blue is a scientist somewhere in the states that is currently helping Mr. Green, a.k.a. Bruce Banner, out. Oh, I like it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, ah, you see colors. Yeah. Um. So oh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the overarching use of green. Um. When like like towards the end, because it was killing me in a couple of places. But <laughs> alas, <laughs> alas, he manages to sneak back to Culver University. Yes. yes. Aha! I got it. Uh, in uh, in Virginia, uh, which is where. A, he was doing the work uh, with, with, where he was doing the work and experimentation on the Gamma Project with his once love interest, uh, Betty Ross, who happens to be the daughter of the general that's uh, currently chasing him uh, throughout the ends of the planet. What a twist. Uh, so, yes, what a twist. Uh, oh, God, why did I make a, a, a room reference? Ugh. <laughs> He reconnects with an old friend of his who actually owns a local pizzeria. Uh, he, he is given a place to sleep for the uh, for for a few days, a uh, spare room, uh, and he poses as a pizza delivery boy for this pizzeria in order to sneak into the campus. Fun mm -hmm. fact! Uh, fun fact: the pizza place is called Stanley's, as a reference to Stan Lee. Oh really? Ah, oh, derp. I and just, and, I just and the guy who owns the place is actually the original voice of the of Bruce Banner from like the '60s cartoon show, which is at, which is awesome and fantastic because it leads us to another uh, another great cameo because the security guard that's uh, watching the ca that's watching the the science building that Bruce has to sneak into is none other than Lou, Lou Ferrigno. Ferrigno. Who uh, is famous for portraying the Hulk in the old TV show, and he's he's still big as hell, a bodybuilder, just ridiculous. But Bruce uh, bribes him with the free pizza, and he gets uh, he gets to head to the fifth floor, uh, which is where the lab used to be, uh, that where they did the experiment, and he initially turned into the Hulk. But unfortunately, the uh, unfortunately the data is no longer there dejected bruce goes back to the pizzeria trying to figure out where he's gonna move on because mr blue literally cannot help him without the data and he's just trying to figure out where to go next uh he's actually about to leave out of the pizzeria when he kind of he ends up running into his former love betty who convinces him to come back uh, to her place and stay with him but she also reveals that she had the data from the 
uh, she actually held on to the data from the old experiment for safekeeping, just in case one day in the future she was able to figure out a way to help him with it. We're going to cut now to uh, the military oh, um, yes, this bit is important. of the story. Because it is important. Uh, so Emil Blonsky goes up to uh, General Ross and says, Hey, uh, so I'm not one for leaving things unfinished, so if you guys are taking another crack at the crazy ass like green monster man uh i want in and i want to know some more stuff about what it is you've been doing and ross apparently just really likes this guy because he starts like he starts like spilling all the fucking secrets on the planet you're like the says, you're like well, the son-in-law i never had <laughs> yeah you're you're the guy i wish Freddy was into but anyway he reveals that uh he like the his division of the military weapons industry uh is currently looking at uh, bio bioengineering bio engine, uh, genetic enhancement uh, he would say the guys across the hall are trying to w- make better weapons here I'm trying to make you better in which uh, is a not so subtle nod to the uh, super soldier serum which all of our Marvel guys know uh, is uh, the original serum that turned puny little Steve Rogers into Captain America, the greatest super soldier of all time. But that'll be referenced again in Avengers, I believe, as well. <laughs> that will be definitely referenced again in Avengers. Of course, that serum, what the, the secrets to that serum was lost when the uh, scientist who created it passed away before he could let anybody else know how to make it. Um, and they've been trying to reproduce it ever since, which is what General Ross was also working on, a, uh, a couple of different applications and trials at replicating that serum. Unfortunately, Bruce was, Bruce was the guy that he actually had working on this serum without his knowledge. Bruce thought he was, uh, actually coming up with a way to make soldiers, uh, immune to gamma radiation. Uh, but, of course, Ross had him also working on the, as a byproduct of this, working on the super soldier serum. Bruce, of course, was so sure that he had the, he had the answer right, that before he went, out, went about normal testing it, he actually tested it on himself. It went horribly, horribly wrong, and this results in the creation of the Hulk. Uh, which, of course, Ross tells Blonsky all about because he's a soldier and I trust his instinct and blah, 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 whatever the fuck ever. Um, so he then asks Blonsky, you know, like, how old are you? You're about 39, 39 years old. And says, it says, time starts to take a toll, does it not? And he says, well, yeah, of course it does. If I could take what I knew now and put it in the body that I had 10 years ago, that would be that would be someone I would not want to fight. Uh, in which case, General Ross says, "You know, I think we can uh, we can arrange something like that." And we cut to uh, we cut to Blonsky actually being given a a treatment of this uh, kind of rudimentary super soldier serum uh, that Ross uh, felt was was actually being pretty promising before they shut it down. Uh, which will get him ready for round two. Uh, so, fight. Uh, cut ba- with the fight, the fight sequence. Uh, so we cut back to we cut back to Bruce and uh, Betty uh, trying to figure out. Um, uh, essentially, Bruce is getting ready to head on out. Uh, he needs to take this to Doctor to uh, Mister Blue. I'm sorry, I almost spoiled it. But he needs to take <laughs> this to Mister Blue. Uh, so that he can hopefully get this uh, get this uh, cure going on, when General Ross, who is without a doubt just the most like, careless and like he's basically most ridiculous, Ahab. like most ridiculous fucking uh, general of all time, because he decides to like to essentially stage a military operation and try and like attack slash capture this guy that he knows will become a behemoth like like destroying anything in his path in the middle of a school campus well ryan sure. ryan you play pokemon go you know how serious those collectors are general ross just wants to make sure he gets his rare capture this is it right here yeah 
You know what? I have not seen a I have not seen Pokemon Go uh, players like destroying property and like agitating like dangerous, dangerous like gamma mutants in the in the quest to catch a fucking Articuno. All I right? mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't it doesn't fly. It doesn't uh, fly here. I mean, if Niantic had another one of those uh, th- those meetups like they did back over the summer in Chicago. It could probably happen again. I I could see it. (laughs) Man. No excuses. No excuses. As Ross essentially stages this operation, like, like actually corners Bruce and then floods the, the hallway that he's in with gas designed to make him Hulk out instantly. That... Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, that really blows my fucking mind. Wait, wait, wait. Did, there was... did the gas actually, was that the purpose of the gas? Was that just to try to knock him out and it didn't work? I don't know. It had to because, because remember, he says, now she'll see. Now she'll see him. Uh, okay, so like, pre- presuming that that gas was intended to make Hulk Hulk out, how does that benefit Ross at all? It seems like a step backward. I think it would have been interesting to capture Bruce. He probably would have gone willingly if you had you know threatened the right people. That's the thing, but you know what? I mean, honest, honestly, well, first of all, I don't think that Ross is deluded enough to actively threaten his daughter to get Bruce to come with him. He's pretty fucking deluded, but I don't think he's, like, that level of maniacal at this point in the movie. So... <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that the hallway scene is literally the best chance they had to actually just knock him out and catch him as but before he hulks out but the fact that that line that he says now she'll see like she'll see the monster that he really is makes me think yeah no he wanted him to turn which made no fucking sense at all but alas general Ross is a terrible general (laughs) he is honestly like the worst fucking general i'm still not sure why he gets to keep his job. I'm still surprised we see him later on in the MCU, to be quite fucking honest. I kind of like the throwback, but yeah, we'll talk about that more when it comes up. <laughs> yeah, I-, I like the throwback, but I'm like, seriously, this dude is the worst ever. Why the hell is he still in a position of power? Anyway, anyway. A large battle ensues, Hulk versus the military, uh, including Emil Br- Blonsky, who's got this... Uh, kind of proto-super-soldier serum going, and he's actually kind of keeping up with the Hulk. Not blow for blow, per se, but he's very acro- he's, he's He's got a high-level acrobatics check. He's dodging everything that the Hulk is throwing at him while constantly trying to shoot him in the face. It's really annoying for the Hulk, but the Hulk can't seem to put him down into the ground uh, just, so, just yet. Um, but after a while, uh, the Hulk ends up beating the, like, the entire fucking platoon, um, to the point where they're, they're calling in gunships and whatnot. Now, before the gunships show up, uh, Emil Blonsky is still trying to shoot the Hulk, and he ends up running out of bullets. So, cocky as all get out, he just strolls up to the Hulk and is like, is that it? Is that all you got? He literally has no weapons. He has, like, he he spent all his bullets, he fucking pulled out his sidearm, nothing, and he just walks up to him and says, that the best you got? And so the Hulk boots him in the chest. He basically ragdolls him him across the yard. It's great. Ragdolls him, like, a hundred feet away, like, collides into a fucking tree. He's dead. He's, he's, like, any, any rational person's just like, I saw that man die. Like, that man is dead. He's gone. He's, 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 he's not coming back. Um, but after that, the gunship shows up, um, tries to shoot the Hulk while Betty is literally standing in front of him, but kind of out of sight. So, of course, the Hulk protects Betty and saves her, even though the gunship ends up crashing around them. He saves, he saves Betty and runs away with her, essentially. Um, now, it is revealed that, uh, it is revealed that the guy that Betty was currently seeing, of course, not anymore, but the guy who was, be- who Betty was seeing was the guy that actually tipped off General Ross, who was <laughs> in, in a really comic twist, for me at least, personally, is actually played by the guy, 
Uh, the the dad from Modern Family. Ah, Phil. Phil. <laughs> oh, Phil. He plays a he plays a psychologist. He's just the goofiest person. I love him dearly. Oh, but yeah. it was good to see him. Uh, and and it was good to see him. And he's like, you know, I used to always wonder why she did ever talked about you. Now I know. I mean, I saw him protect her, and you almost killed her. Blah 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 blah. Understandably, he's, he's a bit that salty. He did the wrong thing. <laughs> He is quite, quite salty. I mean, I saw where he was coming from, but then he realized, oh my god, I've made a terrible mistake in calling this man. Um, but, uh, of course, Bruce and Betty end up escaping, and after Bruce ends up calming down and becoming back and coming back to himself, Betty agrees to actually go with him to meet up with Mr. Blue, whom they come to find out, along with S.H.I.E.L.D., as S.H.I.E.L.D.'s heavily monitoring anything they do, uh, but comes to find out that Mr. Blue is actually Dr. Samuel Stern. Dun, dun, from, dun. From the, uh, from, uh, what is it, New York University? NYU? Something like that, yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a big university in New York. So They're in Harlem, it. I know that much. <laughs> so, um, they, uh, Betty actually gets to uh, go on the lam with Bruce, uh, essentially making their way across country from Virginia to New York. Well, they meet him uh, to give him the data and uh, hopefully work on this cure. And that is where we go to Act 3. Uh, back in my court. So, uh, while they're uh, meeting up with Stearns, uh, let's flash over to the military guys real quick. Where they're all thinking that uh, Blonsky's basically done for. He's he's, <laughs> he, he, he's basically just a bag of meat wrapped up in plaster or whatever. Surprisingly, they think he's, he's still breathing. He's still, still breathing, sure and they're how. all like, "Well, we'll give him a medal. We'll do something. This is this mission's over." As Ross walks away, the camera pans in onto uh, or zooms in onto uh, Blonsky, who's making a little fist with his broken ass hand, and you realize, "Oh shit." He's like Wolverine. He's healing super quick. Um, See, this is non this is nonsensical because in that scene, the the the, the doctors are, are are like, yeah, all of the bones in his body are pretty much crushed gravel. Even the dick point. bone, especially the dick bone, especially the dick bone. <laughs> I mean, he got he. he he took he took that tree to the nads at the end. Did, did, didn't you see that? It was real bad. That was tree real fucked bad. it up super hard. Forget the Hulk. <laughs> it's just not good. It's just no bueno. I mean, I've seen those trees in GTA and Saints Row. They'll mess up your car. No shit, it was gonna mess him up. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, we'll leave the military guys alone for like two seconds. So Hulk and Betty are meeting up with uh, Stearns, and he's basically explained to him what his process is and how risky it's going to be. And Bruce turns to Betty's like, do you think we can afford to do this? And she's like, we can't afford not to do this. They give him all the information he needs off the, the hard drive. And they begin starting the procedure, so to speak. Back over to the military, guys. Uh, Blonsky's back up in, on, on his ass, I guess. He's not really standing just yet. Uh, Ross walks and he's like, you're up. And Blonsky then gets on his feet and says, yeah, I'm ready to go for round three. And uh, that's when they proceed to give him another dosage of the serum, getting him prepped up for, essentially, his hopefully final fight. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and that's when the military guys are basically sent loose to go hunt down the Hulk once more. But before they actually get in a position, we're going to go back over to Hulk, Betty, and Stearns, who they have Hulk strapped, or they have uh, Banner strapped up to a chair, to a machine. So it's a blood dialysis machine. It pumps out the old blood of uh, Bruce, pumps in the serum that they've synthesized, basically calm the Hulk down. During this process, there's a roughly 90... There's a roughly early 2000 CGI uh, thing happening here where he goes into mid-transformation. Uh, you can see him almost fully hulking out, but then he kind of slowly goes back to his normal self. And you are under the impression that the serum actually took hold. It actually took effect. We may never see the Hulk again. Oh, no! Good thing it's a Hulk movie, otherwise I wouldn't have believed that that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, so Stearns, after the procedure, seems to be a success, takes him in the back where he has all these other samples, because uh, he says the other test subjects didn't survive, and Bruce's first response is, what test subjects? Wait, test subjects? Excuse me? They go in back and they see all the different vials of blood 
uh, based off the Hulk's blood. I believe he found a way to duplicate it or, or synthesize copies of it to do multiple experiments on different subjects, presumably small animals like rats, but possibly also humans. We don't really know how ethical Stearns is. He's kind of like Krieger. We don't really know. Um, <laughs> so Bruce is like, you got to destroy all this shit. This gets in the wrong hands. This is the government's hands. This could end horribly for everybody, including you. And Stern's like, nah, bro, it's fine. That's when the snipers from the military show up. And Stern and, and uh, Blonsky basically taking them all down. Blonsky tackles mm. Oh, I just caught it. What? That scene actually proves it's possible to knock Bruce out without him hulking out. Well, no, no, because he has a serum on him now, remember? The serum's holding him back for the moment. Mm. So we don't know for sure. I believe you're right. Mm. But this is not a good. This is not a good example. <laughs> mm, all right, all right, gone. Anyway, so Blonsky tackles Bruce down, starts slapping the fuck out of him, saying, "Come on, fight me, bring it Let on." Let me see him. Let me see him. He wants the Hulk to come out and play, and uh, Bruce is like, "Sorry, bro, he he's taking a nap." Um, so they capture uh, Banner and Betty, and uh, they go on a, cho- a a chopper, so to speak, with um with a gunship. Uh, with um, Ross, and they fly off. Um, they capture Stearns as well. They bring him into interrogation, but Stearns breaks him out of the interrogation. His idea is, "Hey, you saw what that guy turns into," and Stearns is like, "Yes, it's glorious, godlike." Um, and then, of course, uh, Stearns is like, or "No, it's not Stearns. Blonsky." He's like, "Can you do the same thing for me?" And uh, that's when some fun little experimentations happen. Uh, we go over to the gunship where, uh, basically, uh, Banner is trying to, uh, is in, and, uh, Betty are holding hands, pleading, for, or hoping for the best. Uh, Ross is kind of gloating. And all of a sudden, they get a strange little call, uh, that there's another Hulk monster. So, to, or the Hulk is loose in New York, and Ross turns around and is like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's right here. And that's when you see this giant, abominable creature just smacking down soldiers left and right. You see him on these little cameras, uh, on these monitors in, in the um, uh, gunship, because they all are equipped with cameras, standard equipment. Um, this monster sounds suspiciously like Emil Blonsky, and he grabs uh, one of the soldiers, looks on the cameras like, Bring, give me a real fight. He can kills them, and then proceeds to destroy the rest of New Yorker, goes on to his rampage. Uh, Wait, yeah. so you, 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 you missed where they actually said the thing. You missed what? where they said the thing. What, 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 what did I miss? Cause, uh, cause, so uh, when he says, "Hey, you know, um, I, I want what he's got. I, I want what that guy's got," um, and uh, Stern says, "Well, you look oh, yeah, I don't, like I... you've got something in you already. I don't know what you've already taken. The result, like if I mix it, the result could be an abomination." abomination. I feel bad. I didn't miss that. Uh, but yeah, that, so there's a little in, uh, exchange where that happens. Uh, uh, Blonsky threatens Stearns, and Stearns like, yeah, no, I, you know what, I don't care. And uh, they they strap him up. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Blonsky actually destroys the lab as he escape as he breaks out with his new form. And uh, there's a little bit of an injury that Stern gets, uh, which also leaves uh, has a ga- gaping wound on his head. Some blood pops in, uh, so starts dripping into it from the machine. Some of Hulk's blood, and you see him start to mutate, and we'll never see that ever again. Moving on, nope, to the... we'll never we'll never see that guy ever again. <laughs> Moving on to the final fight here. Uh, so, uh, we're back on the chopper, and, um, Bruce is like, I gotta, I gotta go, I, I, I'm the one who can stop him. Um, and Betty's trying to tell him not to, but obviously it's a Hulk movie, he's gotta go do it, it's, he's gotta do the final fight. So, they open up the bay doors, and Bruce just falls out, he's like, I'm just gonna go down there and do it. Uh, and he's hoping he's gonna transform during the fall, it doesn't quite go that way, and he falls straight damn into the cement and just is underground damn. and... And uh, I just want to make a quick shout out to uh, Thor Ragnarok for uh, giving a little wink to this scene in uh, the Ragnarok movie. That was pretty good. They did a good job with that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. But uh, unlike that scene, uh, <laughs> this time Hulk punches his way out from under the uh, under the street, and uh, this is where the fight happens. Um, I'm gonna you know gl- glaze over it really quick. Um, cause it's, it's two big green monsters smacking each other around, throwing cars around, using cars as, cars as boxing mitts, just punching the fuck out of each other. Um. It was good! It's a really good fight scene, if you haven't seen it yet. Honestly, it's one of the best parts of the film. Go check it out. It's, it's fun. And, uh, during the fight, 
Abomination breaks away. The gunship that Ross is on gets into position to start fire, opening fire in on this thing. Um, not taking that very well. Abomination brings the gunship down. It crashes. Hulk freaks out and goes up to make sure Betty's okay. Um, they're still alive. They all get out of the ship, probably with some minor injuries, of course. And that's when Abomination takes the opening to get a big old fucking chain and just wrap it around Hulk's neck, pulling him back and trying to strangle him. You mean Abomination's neck? No, Abomination gets uh, Hulk first, and then uh, they struggle for ah, a bit. you're right, you're right, yep. you're right. Um, they struggle for a bit, and then Hulk manages to break out, turn the tide around, get the chain around uh, Abomination's neck, and almost kills him, beats him within an inch of his life. And that's when Betty tries to stop him, because she doesn't want him to lose his humanity. And that's a very, that's, that's a very noble cause. I, I think it was a, I think it was probably a worthwhile move. Hulk looks down, examines what he's doing, he's like, no, I can't do this anymore. I gotta get out. I gotta get the fuck out of here. He was, he, like, he was literally about to rip his head off. It would have happened. It looked so good. It looked so good. So Hulk bolts, uh, presumably, uh, Blonsky, as an abomination, is arrested. And I believe there's actually a, uh, name drop in, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show that abomination is still alive and in, in, Wait, in, really? I think he's name dropped once. I don't think they ever show him, obviously, but I do believe he's name dropped during the Hydra exposure arc. Like Holy the, shit! Really? I, yeah. I think so. I, I had to rewatch, but I do remember that specifically because I'm like, man, I wish it'd be so. It'd be so cool if he'd show up, but he won't. <laughs> Everyone's kind of going back to their you know lives. Um, Hulk, Bruce, we don't know where back he actually is. Back on the is. run. He's back on the run. We don't know where he is. It's been. Quite a number of days of that incident. I don't remember the exact number they show, but it's more than a, a couple weeks, I believe. And um, he's just sitting in, the, in his cabins in the middle of nowhere. We don't know where. And he's just meditating. And uh, as the camera gets closer and closer to his face, he opens his eyes. They go green. And the days of that incident is back to zero, indicating he has now some level of control over this creature, but not. it doesn't explain how much. They're hoping for a sequel. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, Damn. And then for the non post credits, post credits, uh, we have General Ross in a bar. Again, we don't know where, but presumably back in New York, but we don't know for sure. Drinking green fucking shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. He's, dr- he's drinking I'll, I'll mean wait. green ale of some sort. I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm going to wait for it. Wait I know. I know. Uh, and of course, he's just, you know, getting drunk because everything went to hell and he has no idea how to fix it. And of course, speaking of going to hell, here comes Tony Stark into the front door, uh, basically proposing to uh, him that they're forming a team. And interested, he wants to know more. But before Tony can really explain anything, that's when the credits roll. <laughs> Put it together. Put a little team together. It's fine. Put a little team together. So that's the Incredible Hulk. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, you know... <laughs> the, I, it's, not, it's not that this movie is bad. Honestly, this movie is not bad. There are some things that it does well. Um, I I personally like the CGI. Um, I like the action. Like, it's action. It, the action's top-notch. It handles action very um, well. Right. My only problem with it, and I think was it was the, the overarching problem of it, was that it felt kind of mindless. Like, it felt just like, it felt like a, like a typical action blockbuster. You go to see some shit blow up, and a big green dude, like, toss around tanks and beat the hell out of things. Like, there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of the, uh, of the depth and the humor and the storytelling that really has become synonymous with uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I feel like after Iron Man... They tried something new with the Hulk because they knew they could kind of, they could they could afford to fuck up the Hulk. Like if it didn't go well, then okay, it's the Hulk, and every n- not everybody will be like insanely mad. Like if you fucked up Iron Man or Captain America or Thor, then people would get really pissed. So I felt like they 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 had a uh, they had. Almost like not, I don't want to say a throwaway movie because that's really unfair. But they had they had an opportunity to experiment without a whole bunch of repercussions, and they found out some stuff that didn't work. Overall, it's a good movie, but just being good when in comparison to everything else that MCU has done makes it the weakest for me. All right, that's fair. 
Um, I would say this is a fair film. I would definitely not say it's... It, I would say it's not, definitely not my top 5, 10... D- not in the top half. Um, but I, don't, I, w- I would say it's not the worst film in the Mar- MCU. I, and I'll debate that when we get to the film I'm thinking it is. Um, okay. But um, I think that it's a admirable attempt to try to make the Hulk work on the dick screen. I think you can easily... Do- I think it's doable. I just think that after Ain Lee's Hulk... It was going to be tough, not because it was it was good, but because there's just a it, it, the reputation had been sort of stained a bit just from that, and it's hard to really rebuild when you didn't have a good foundation to start with. I think once Avengers brought Hulk in and they did a good job with him in the team up film, and uh, the audience loved him in that, that's when a solo Hulk movie should have happened. And Universal's kind of holding us up on that right now. So yeah, we don't know. Uh... We don't know when it's going to happen, if ever. I feel like I, I I don't feel like it's the fact that the Hulk did good in a team up movie that would that that will give him the uh, that'll give him the the popularity to really get a good solo movie. I think it's I think it was the interpretation of the Hulk. In well, no, that's Avengers. what I, that, that's what I mean. Though that in that movie, the team up film, they did a good interpretation, and I think that's where you could have spun off for a solo film if they had the ability to. Yeah, but they pro- like. I feel like I feel like you you learn more from failure than you do from success. Um, I feel like they had uh, they learned a lot of what not to do uh, from this iteration of the Hulk, which led to especially getting Mark Ruffalo, but it led to a very fantastic uh, iteration of the Hulk in Avengers and later on in the rest of the MCU. Well, while we're discussing opinions in the film. Let's hit up our review roundup section real quick. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief. Um, so, a few uh, notable uh, reviews here, but first let's get the actual scores overall. Um, so, the review, the critic score, 67 out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes, and the fans rated it 71 out of 100. So, fans were a little more favorable to it, but overall, this is definitely a C level movie at the very best. Um, yeah. Reviews around the general consensus, or re- re- reviews, generally came out to something like what Roger Ebert here says, uh, quote, it sidesteps the intriguing aspects of Hulkdom and spends way too much time in, dare I say, noisy and mindless action sequences. What um, I tell you? Another one I have here is from Roger Moore. Uh, Marvel is so busy setting up the next sale that they can't uh, see the mediocrity built into their own formula. That's a Ooh. criticism we'll see more than once because as much as we like the Marvel films... There are critics out there who do see all of these films as just commercials for the next Marvel film. Not to say they're wrong or right, just that that's a common criticism we'll see as the uh, train continues to roll down the, through the stations. Um, but there are some yeah. pos- there are some positive reviews though. Uh, Colin Cover says uh, this uh, Hulk may not be certified uh, a certified smash, but it makes a big impact. Another one I have here from. Kirk Honeycutt. I'm just picking random ones out here. This is my last one. Uh, a neat thrill ride with an intelligent script by Zach Penn and smart, well-paced direction by French director of the Transporter series, Louis Leterrier. I'm still mispronouncing that, probably. Anyway. Leterrier? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, we can confirm he's French. Um, anyway, so those are the reviews for Hulk. Averaging about three to three and a half to four stars, I'd say, out of five at most. Um, but probably more three and a half. Um... So overall, not a, not a horrible film, but it, it, it had some rough edges to it. Let's not mince words. Um, yeah. So with that, it's time for our listener question of the week. Uh, so last week, we asked everybody, what is their first MCU experience? For some people, it was Iron Man. We talked about it in the fir- as the first film of the whole series. So what's your first film? Um, I did get one answer on Tumblr. So shout out to... I'm going to mispronounce this for sure because it's not even a real word. Uh... Merchuimne, Merchuimne. <laughs> I will certainly put. I'll certainly put the name up on the, on the uh, screen when it goes up on YouTube. For those who are audio listeners, uh, sorry, I really can't give you any visual. Um, so uh, she's she or he? I'm assuming she uh, said uh, mine was uh, the first Thor movie. I saw it with my uncle while my father was in the hospital. We both needed distraction. Thor has been my favorite since. Okay. Okay. Um, if... I'm sorry? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, um, I... And I'm... I honestly... 
it's this is one of the big things that I love about these movies is that it's becoming such a point of I don't know, such like such a point of importance for people. Like a lot of like especially with uh touching stories like this, like being centered around these movies and and the concept of heroism and things of that nature and just great storytelling that's being done with these movies. I mean the MCU is going to go down in history as one of the most successful uh, cinematic achievements ever, period. And Disney and not just because the right time for that, too. Y- y- they really did. Oh, my God. But it's not just because the movie sold a lot. It's because the movies are fantastic movies with overarching, like, with overarching stories and great things to say about society and, and just amazing stories in general. So well, thank you, Tumblrite, for, for sharing that with us. Well, and to add to that, too, um, I was listening to a uh, video about Overwatch recently, and one of the big selling points that they brought up, and I didn't think about it at first, I've never played Overwatch, it's not my kind of game, uh, but the thing they bring up is that there's a character, a, a role for everybody, because they make all the characters so unique and different. And I think at Marvel Films, maybe not to that extent, but certainly to some extent, kind of fill that same void in the film industry. Every different Marvel hero kind of has a different sort of tone or uh, way of doing things that can appeal to different kinds of audiences. You're going to have your Hulk movie, the one Hulk movie, pull in your more monster creature feature people. You'll have your uh, Iron Man bring in your comedy and slapstick. You'll have your more uh, espionage, spy, historical people with with, um, uh, Captain America. And you'll have your more mythical cosmic stuff with Thor for a while until Guardians of the Galaxy shows how to do it properly. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a movie for everybody, and I think that's kind of one of the cool things about the MCU as well, which is another big testament to what it'll end up what, when, when, in history when we get look back on it someday. Which is kind of what we're doing now almost. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Ryan, what was your first MCU experience? I know we've talked about this in the previous recording, but just so we have it on our, our recording here. Well, okay, so if we're talking about strictly MCU, then it was Iron Man. Uh, I got on the train when it first started. Um, but if we're going to talk about first overall Marvel movie, my first was X-Men. Nice stuff. Yeah. God, I was like, what, eight? Eight? Like eight or you're nine eight, years you're somewhere old. Somewhere between eight and ten, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, no, I was I was I ate that shit up. Pat Sir Patrick Stewart as as Professor Xavier. You can't Please. cast better than that. Please. McAvoy's doing a fine job, but Patrick Stewart's basically our Xavier for all of time. Yeah. Oh man. Um mm-hmm. For me personally, uh mine was Iron Man as well. Um but it's a little different. It's a little special to me, because uh, I don't remember the exact circumstances for when I saw it. I just remember that I saw it three times in theaters, which is something I didn't do for movies very often. The only other movie I could think I did that for was Incredibles, which we can probably talk about that a whole other oh podcast later. Oh my god! Later. Oh, Incredibles! Okay. So, so hype for the sequel. Anyway, um, but I saw it three times in theaters, once with friends, just because we didn't know what it was. We're like, it looks fun, let's check it out. And we actually had a blast with it. I uh, saw it again with my family, because uh, they hadn't seen it. I'm like, you've got to check this out. And they loved it. Um, and then, of course, I saw my buddy Chad, who, for some reason, hadn't seen it with the rest of us. I don't know why, and we, I dragged him along with me. Actually, no, he dragged me along with him. I think he even paid for me, because he wanted someone to go see it with. <laughs> um, so I got, to, I got to see it at least three, t- three couple times. That was great. Um, and after that, of course, it, it made me a Robert Downey Jr. fan, having learned of where he came from prior to this film, and where he would go. I would not have expected where he is now to be where he is today. Um, but just... It made me a huge Robert Downey Jr. fan. I went back to find some of his classics. I'm still looking for all of them. But, uh, no, he's a great actor and just love the work he did with, he, with this. So, overall good stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Um, as for the overall Marvel, just to throw that out there, I don't remember. I assume it was X-Men because it came first, but I might have seen Spider-Man first. I don't remember for sure. That's so, fair. So, uh, my, my past Aaron does not have good memory. Future Aaron... Has no memory. President Aaron is struggling to get it all sorted out. Um, <laughs> so that is our listener question of the week uh, from last week. For next week, everybody, uh, what other Hulk villains would you like to see make it into a Marvel Cinematic Universe film? I'm not saying they have to be a standalone Hulk movie, but let's say there's a big crossover event where, uh, let's say the Avengers t- uh, are out and another Hulk villain shows up. Or some other circumstance. I don't know what it'd be. You, you, 
Tell me who you want to see, and maybe even give details as to how they'd show up or why. Uh, leave comments down below. Um, if there are other answers to this week's question, I will go ahead and splice them in right about here. Uh, if you have any, other, if you have any uh, answers to the question, though, please leave them down in the comments below. Make sure you uh, reach out to us at evacstation at gmail.com. You can also reach to us on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, even our Steam group, even though it's not super active at the moment. Um, so, Ryan, with that, it's time for our last segment, which we're going to have to do a little bit of rearranging for. Uh, it is the no. It is the no Google trivia war. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So, uh, fans uh, who are listening, uh, quick heads up. So, we did record this podcast already, as we've mentioned a couple times. Um, and in that uh, version, we did already do some questions, and the score actually did change. So, I'm going to let you know right now we're not doing more questions at this moment because it didn't seem right to add more questions, erase the previous scores, and ruin everyone's hard work. Um, it just didn't seem fair. Because I don't want to take Ryan's lead away by changing questions or give me an unfair advantage or whatever. So currently, based on the questions from our previous recording, uh, I'm at 5 points, Ryan's at 7 points, and Max is at 2 points. Um, hang hmm. on a second. Uh, so um, what we're going to do instead this week is we're going to um, come up with a punishment game for Max. Because Max is not here during our previous recording, and he won't be here for the next recording. Which is all going to be this done the guy. same day. Yeah. So, uh, Max is trying to get laid. Let's just put it that way. So, <laughs> while he's busy trying to wet his whistle, so to speak, we're going to punish him when he gets back. <laughs> so, Ryan, I need help coming up with the creative way to punish Max for his, uh, his, uh, inf- uh, I'm trying to think of a good word for it. Infidelity? No. <laughs> <laughs> his treachery. His... his treachery, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how dare he have a life outside of this podcast? How dare he have life? He's a high school student. Seriously. Kind of. Kind of. I can get life since I was in college, damn it. <laughs> um, um, hmm. I'm not sure. Now, hmm. my personal suggestion, and hear me out, we, we pick a monologue from one of the films, anyone we want. It could be an Iron Man monologue, a Captain America monologue, whatever it is. We have him recite it to us. In a foreign language. He likes talking foreign languages. Let's see if he can translate that into a foreign language and then recite it to us. You know, that's not a half bad idea. Either that or um, we can pick a uh, an accent or a dialect for him to do an entire podcast in. Ooh. That might make tough for us to hear understand what he's saying, though. But I'm okay with I that. Know. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, all right. We won't pick here. Instead... We're going to have the audience vote, and if we don't get enough votes, we'll just pick ourselves anyway. But, people who are listening, uh, leave a comment down below. We'll even put up a straw poll if it helps. Um, what do you want Max to do? Do you want Max to recite a monologue from a movie in a foreign language? Or do you want him to speak in a foreign accent? Or maybe you want him to do something else. Go ahead and leave a comment down below with your suggestions, and if we find something we really like, we might do that instead. Um, so with that, we'll move on to the final, final segment which is ranking the movie, the, the movie ranking list. I need to think of an actual catchy name for this. Um, but basically we decide, of all the Marvel movies we've seen, where is it going to rank? What's our number one movie? What's our lowest movie? Today we're ranking Incredible Hulk after having ranked Iron Man. I think it's safe to say that Hulk is not going to beat Iron Man. Would you be uh, agreeing with that, Ryan? <laughs> I can agree with that assessment. Um, and it isn't that Hulk is a bad film, but... Iron Man launched the MCU to start with, and the effects of Iron Man are felt even to the most recent films, because Robert Downey Jr. is in so many of these goddamn movies. Honest Um, to God, Iron Man is better than it had any fucking right to be. I mean, it was literally the first iteration of the MCU, and they knocked it out of the fucking park. This is just ridiculous. Fantastic. And I, I feel like... At least for a good while, we're not going to have a film that beats it. I don't think it, we might before we get to, we might we might before we get to Iron Man three, but I don't know for sure. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I'm not trying to spoil it by saying Iron Man's going to be number one for a while, but it's going to be a bit of a struggle to beat it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. No. I. I... I'm try I'm sitting here trying to think what I'm gonna what I'm going to recommend takes number one. It's probably not gonna be for a minute. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have a couple ideas, but like I said, I don't think I'm gonna see them till phase two. But we'll see. Yeah. 
Um, so with that, if you have suggestions for what movie you think should be number one, please leave a comment down below. Again, evacstation at gmail.com, Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. And let us know what you think should be the number one movie and why. And when we get to that movie, we will read your response here on the podcast. Um, I think that's everything, Ryan. Uh, do we have anything else we want to end on? No, I think we did it. All right. That is our first recording of the night. So for those listening, uh, we will be back next week for you in 10 minutes for us for Iron Man <laughs> 2. So please stay tuned. And as always, we'll see you after the credits. Bye. Bye.